He's my family. He's my brother-in-law. Didn't cross your mind to maybe tell us you had a DEA agent for a brother-in-law? Hey everybody and thank you for watching another video. My name is Merge and welcome to the Breaking Bad What If series that I call the Heisenverse. A series where I make a change somewhere in the Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul timeline and see how that one change ripples throughout the entire universe. And in this video we explore the idea of Jack letting Hank live during the episode Ozymandias and showing just how far Walter would go for his family and how you can't do business with everyone. But before we get started if you could leave a like on this video to support the channel I'd appreciate it. Now. Let's get into it. After the shooting stops, Hank is left leaning against his truck and bleeding from a gunshot to the leg. And with his gun empty, he looks over to see his partner Steve Gomez shot dead. But he notices that his gun is not too far away and he decides to crawl towards it. And as he drags himself closer to the shotgun, right as he gets within arm's reach, Jack's boot comes down on the weapon and Hank finds himself surrounded by the entire gang. And as he rolls over to his back expecting a bullet to come at any moment, the strangers talk about and search for Jesse Pinkman. A search that leads Kenny to finding a DEA badge on Steve Gomez, which instinctively has Jack getting ready to execute Hank on the spot. But Walter finally regains his bearings and he starts yelling from the back of the truck for Jack to stop. Jack, no, no, no. Jack, no, no. And once Todd gets him out the truck, he'd be the only thing that stands between Jack and Hank. And as Walter begins to plead for his brother-in-law's life and explains their connection to each other, Jack becomes skeptical about Walter and he's wanting to know what was going on before they came. You know, being that he's in handcuffs right now. But Walter tells him that whatever's happening has nothing to do with them. And Jack calmly reminds him of the dead DEA agent and the bullet that's in his partner's leg right now. And Walter tells him, Jack, the DEA knows no, nothing about not this. Not yet. No Calvary coming? Jack questions. You bet your ass the Calvary's coming, Hank says gripping his wound, and Walter tries to calm him down by reasoning with him and saying, Hank, Hank, you have to listen to me. Now nothing can change what just happened, you understand? But you can still walk out of this, all you have to do is, you just, you just have to let this go. And listening to Walter stand with these psychopaths and then telling him to just let something like this go, Hank looks up at him and lets out a sigh, which in response has Jack getting ready to kill him once again and truly seeing no scenario where Hank lives. And being all out of options, Walter while being restrained by Kenny would offer his money to Jack in return for Hank's life. And after clarifying the amount of 80 million dollars, Jack takes a step back to hear him out. So that's what got this party started, he says. And Walter looks down at Hank and tells him, I'm sorry Hank, as he looks up towards Jack and Todd and tells him, but first, Todd, I need you to, I need you to knock him out. And as Todd approaches Hank ready to oblige, Jack stops him and takes his shotgun from Todd and knocks Hank out with the butt of the gun himself. Then he says now face to face with Walter, now talk. The money, it's, it's buried out here and you, you, you can have every dime and still walk away a free man if you just let him go. Walter explains glancing down at his unconscious brother-in-law, then back up at Jack. And how you gonna make that fly, Walter? Jack questions. Pinkman. Jesse Pinkman is all that they have against me, and being that he was out here with Hank instead of a task force, there's a good chance that none of this is official. So all we have to do is find out what he told him, you put a bullet in his head, and we all can walk. Walter says erratically looking around at the group, and Jesse who's still under the car is now trembling after what he heard Walter propose. That's a pretty good deal and all, but what's stopping the DEA from coming to my front door when Sparky here wakes up? Jack says now smoking a cigarette and referring to Hank. Don't you get it? Once we take care of Jesse, he'll have nothing. No evidence, no witnesses, just a word of an agent who shouldn't have even been here. Walter says trying to win them over as he continues. Jack, 80 million dollars, and I'll still show Todd how to cook. You have nothing to lose, just, just, just don't kill him. And Jack blows out a puff of smoke before telling Walter. Okay, I'll buy it. So where's this money of yours? And Walter stands there hesitant on revealing his only bargaining chip saying, Once, it, once the job is done, everything is yours. I don't know if you noticed, but you're not exactly in the best position to call the shots right now. So I'll tell you what, either you tell me where this money is, or I'm going to put a bullet in your brother-in-law's head, then I'm going to put a bullet in your head. Jack says holding a gun by his side as he awaits Walter's response, and he's slow to speak after hearing Jack's ultimatum and he tries to appeal to Todd looking over at him and saying, Todd, please, you're not talking to Todd right now, you're talking to me, and you have about five seconds before this goes another way. Jack says angrily cutting him off, five, four, okay. Walter says silently. Three. Jack goes on, not hearing him. I said okay. Walter says louder this time before continuing between breaths. It's the coordinates I gave you. That's where it is. And Jack holds up his hand showing Walter the writing on his palm and he laughs a little saying, so this right here? <laughs> this is a whole nother level right here. And he calls Kenny over to use his GPS to find this location exactly. 
And with a bit of searching and a shovel courtesy of Hank and Gomez, they start to dig until they hit something solid. And once they uncover a barrel finding millions of dollars, they keep digging until they uncover the rest. And as Walter stands there helpless watching it happen, he still remains cuffed, but he's not exactly bothered about losing his money. At this point, he's more concerned about finding Jesse. And he figures that he has to still be around, likely hiding. And considering the last place he was was inside Walter's car, he begins to look in that direction. And when Jack and Ty walks up to Walter uncuffing him, he'd still be looking in that direction of his vehicle before saying, I know where Pinkman is. Oh yeah? Where is he? Jack questions. And Walter just says, there, pointing in the direction of his car. And Jack, Todd, and the rest of the gang's full attention is directed at the black Chrysler, causing Jesse's heart to drop, realizing that he has no place to go. So as the guys drag him out from under the car, Jesse is brought in front of both Jack and Walter with Todd standing off to the side. And Jack looks at Jesse then down at Hank before telling Walter, And you said he wasn't a rat. Hmm. <laughs> then glancing over to Kenny and giving him a knowing look. But Walter speaks up in his defense saying, If I had any idea that he was working with my brother-in-law, none of us would be here. You understand? But Jack was basically half listening as he takes a drag from his cigarette and he tells Jesse, Okay rat, what'd you tell the feds? And with all eyes on Jesse awaiting a response, when he doesn't answer fast enough, Jack gives the man restraining him a nod and they proceed to beat Jesse for minutes, all while Jack and Walter watch, completely unbothered by what they're seeing. Alright, alright, I still need him to talk, damn it, Jack says calling off the beating. Now stand him up. And as the now beaten and bloody Jesse is held up, barely standing, Jack asks him once again, snapping his fingers. Hey, I don't know if you can hear me in there, but this can only get worse for you, so I'll ask you one more time. What'd you tell the feds? So as Jesse tells him about the confession tape that he made with Hank and Gomez and how it's technically not official yet, Walter makes a recommendation that him and Todd head over to Marie's house to get the confession tape. But his proposition is turned down by Jack with him saying, No, I don't think so. Roscoe, Kenny, take the rat here and make sure you get everything, you hear me? And if you have any problems, you know what to do. You got it, Jack, Kenny says having Jesse carry to the car. And so as half the gang including Jesse heads over to Marie's house to get the evidence, Jack, Todd, and Walter are left in the desert to deal with Hank. And while him and Todd are making a tourniquet for Hank's leg, Jack looks down at them and says, Remember what I said, Walter. Don't skip out on family. So, what's the plan with Hank here? And Walter looks up at Jack like he was annoyed by what he said, and he goes on to explain the plan in real time by pulling out Hank's phone from his pocket to make a call to the reservation police and report a shootout in the area. And he gives them the coordinates to the location where his money was buried so they can find Hank. And after that, the unlikely trio heads back to Jack's compound to start the cook and wait for the rest of the gang to return with the evidence. Picking up at the car wash, Marie arrives telling Skyler that Walter's in custody and how she needs to tell Flynn everything right now or she will. But not knowing what transpired in the desert, them coming out with this truth is going to come back in a way that would change the white and Schrader dynamic forever. Because let me just catch you up on the plan that Walter's putting in motion right now. He has Jesse showing Jack's crew where to get the evidence that Hank and Gomez had him record. Then you have Hank who's about to be found with a bullet in his leg that he has an answer for, and not to mention Steve Gomez. And then there's Walter's money, which was the whole reason for all of this. But now that Jack has the money, as well as both Walter and Jesse, Hank's going to have to answer for their whereabouts as well. So when Skylar and Marie tells Walter Jr. the quote truth, he's not so quick to believe what he was just told. I mean, come on, his dad being a drug kingpin? I mean, his dad, really? Is this some kind of joke? Says Walter Jr. And wanting to prove to him that his father is in custody, the three of them head down to the station together. And while that's going on, Kenny and Roscoe are actually on their way back from the compound. And with them having Hank's keys to gain an entry to the house, they were able to get all the tapes and written statements without leaving a trace of their presence. Back at the compound, Walter and Todd are halfway finished with the batch, and while they wait for it to cool, Todd and Jack are having a private conversation in the clubhouse away from Walter, who at this time is in deep thought while staring at a familiar painting, and he's come to accept the $80 million price tag for Hank's life, figuring that if he really wanted to, he can reach out to Lydia and get it back in a few months. But his main concern is the change of heart that he has for Jesse, and even after him going to Hank and trying to set him up, Walter still has love for his surrogate son. But interrupting his train of thought would be the door opening, and as Kenny, Roscoe, and Jesse, who's now in handcuffs, enters the room, after getting the camera set up, Walter and the rest of the gang sit and watch Jesse's confession. And while listening, not only is Walter implicated in the confession, but also Todd, which really gets Jack upset hearing his nephew getting ratted on. And he says, Hey Kenny, you sure this was everything? Yeah Jack, and he was right, this was definitely an off the books assignment. Kenny says referring to Walter, and Jack responds saying, Yeah, and how you figure? Because if they had this kind of stuff on tape and didn't have the cavalry out in the desert, they must have been counting on his arrest to get this tape of theirs to stick. Kenny explains, and Jack while smoking a cigarette and taking in all this information begins to boil with anger, and he looks up at Walter and tells him once again, you said he wasn't a rat, leaving Walter speechless because he really didn't think that Jesse would have went this far. 
but as Jack now turns his attention at Jesse, he looks at him with disgust for being a rat. And in a fit of rage, Jack pulls out his gun and he point blank shoots Jesse in the face, having the shot echo throughout the room and leaving Walter practically hypnotized with his ears ringing as he watches the blood leaves Jesse's body. But Jack snaps his fingers bringing him out of his trance saying, Hey, yo, Walter, you ready to finish the cook? And without saying a word, Walter just gets up and he walks out past Todd who's standing in the doorway. And Jack gives Todd a knowing look as he goes to follow Walter back into the lab. We cut over to the police station where Marie, Skyler, and Walter Jr. are now just getting the news that Hank and Gomez were involved in the shootout and they've been rushed to the nearest hospital, but that's all that anyone knows right now. And when they ask about Walter White, there is no information about him in the system, which is odd considering Marie's last conversation with Hank. I got him. Dead to rights. And hearing that Walter is not with Hank and he's also not answering the phone, it raises a lot more questions about what exactly is going on between Walter and Hank, especially in the eyes of Walter Jr. Because with the cops telling him one thing and his mom and Marie telling him something different, he just wants to hear the truth from his dad. So while they quickly head over to the hospital where Hank is held, Junior is calling his father's phone the entire way there, but he gets no answer every time, having him silent for the duration of the trip. And there's even some tension growing between Marie and Skylar about their husbands, because although Marie's on her high horse about Hank arresting Walter, according to the police themselves, that's just not the case. Which has Skylar kicking herself that she even told Walter Jr. at all. But the only question on her mind that she needs an answer to right now is where is Walter? Back at the compound, Todd and Walter are now breaking up the product, and while he's giving Todd some tips on chemistry, Walter can't help but notice that Kenny and Jack are hanging out in the lab, and they call Todd over to have a whispered conversation, leaving Walter to finish off weighing the product. And maybe if Walter wasn't so preoccupied with coming up with another lie to cover up what happened to Hank, he would have been able to see the plotting going on with Jack, Todd, and Kenny who if you really think about it aren't exactly making it subtle that they have ulterior motives. And Jack walks up to Walter looking down at the fresh blue sky meth and says, huh, would you look at that? Now see what that Lydia woman was talking about when she said blue. Jack says jokingly with Kenny taking a look as well and saying, that's aquamarine right there. And Walter simply says while removing his gloves, it's actually just basic chemistry really. Call it what you want, but a deal's a deal. You gave us the blue stuff for Pinkman and I can't really complain about the payday for your brother-in-law. But I just have one question for you. And Walter stands there waiting for Jack's question. Why didn't you mention you had a brother-in-law in the DEA? And Walter responds uncomfortably saying, I don't, I mean, what, what, why does it matter? It matters to me because I'm going off your word alone that the DEA isn't going to kick my door in. Jack says, snapping back at Walter. Jack, I already told you, the DEA have nothing. No evidence, no witnesses, no connection that can lead them to you. So trust me, you have nothing to worry about. Walter explains beginning to feel nervous. Yeah, see, that's the problem, Walter. After all this shit that happened today, I don't trust you. Jack says as Kenny goes to shut the door behind him, and Walter's finally able to see what's been going on right in front of him this whole time, and immediately he starts to beg for his life. Jack, please, you don't have to do this. I'll, I'll cook. I'll keep cooking. I'll cook for free. Please. But unknown to Walter, all those whispered conversations Jack had with Kenny and Todd was about this exact possibility, and although Todd was completely fine with giving Walter the cage treatment, Jack decided that keeping him around is too much of a liability. So as they continue listening to Walter beg, the sound of a gun being cocked is enough to completely silence the room. And with the feeling of cold steel pressed against his head, Walter's only confused about who's holding the gun, because both Kenny and Jack are in front of him. But when he slowly turns his head, he finds out that it's Todd. And as the two make eye contact, Todd just says, I'm sorry, Mr. White. And he fires. And as Jack begins to light another cigarette, he tells Todd and Kenny, all right, don't just stand there. Somebody clean this shit up. So as Walter's body is dragged out near Jesse's, Todd brings out two plastic barrels and with a couple of gallons of hydrofluoric acid, both Walter and Jesse are reduced to nothing more than corrosive waste for the rest of all time. Over at the Albuquerque General Hospital, after waiting hours for an update, Marie, Skyler, and Walter Jr. are finally given the news about what happened with Hank. And the doctor explains that because of the amount of blood loss when he was shot, he's been put in a medically induced coma. But right now he's stable and they can see him. But when mentioning Steve Gomez or even Walter, the doctors give the unfortunate news that there was nothing they can do as he was pronounced dead at the scene. And as far as Walter, just like the police station, he's not in the system either, bringing Walter Jr. to his breaking point as he starts yelling at Marie saying, this, this is bullshit. You said, you said Uncle Hank arrested dad for being a, a drug dealer. Then, then if that's the case, then why are the rest of the police know anything about it? Flynn, please, you need to calm down. Skyler says trying not to cause a scene, but then Junior says to her, and how could you just believe something like that about dad after after everything that we've been through? You you may not love him anymore, but but I do. And I'm not leaving from this spot until I hear the truth from him. Walter Jr. says sitting back in his seat to continue calling his dad. But just like the many previous calls before, he continues to get no answer. 
So with Junior not wanting to go, only Skylar and Marie enter the room where Hank's held. And when they see him with a breathing tube in his mouth and hooked up to a heart rate monitor, they put whatever they have going on between them to the side. Because at the end of the day, they are sisters and they're still there for each other. And although nothing was said between them, they both have the same thought in their mind while they look at Hank in the hospital room. Did Walter do this? And regardless if he did or not, where is he? It's been nearly a year since the attack on Hank, and since then the DEA has started to build a case against him. And not only for the death of Steve Gomez, but also for the disappearance of Walter White and Jesse Pinkman. And although he's out of his coma, Hank is once again confined to a wheelchair, and he remains on house arrest until the case is closed. Because let's be honest here, the truth sounds a little ridiculous if you say it out loud. You know, the story about being ambushed by neo-Nazis after arresting his drug kingpin brother-in-law whose money was buried out in the desert? Yeah, not exactly the most believable story, and with the rumors and fake news spreading like wildfires, a lot of people believe that Hank and Gomez were actually dirty, and if Walter White was this meth cook, he was probably forced to do it. A narrative that Walter Jr. strongly believes considering all the facts, and since that day in the hospital, he's barely even talked to Marie and Skylar at all, and he has yet to even visit Hank since he came out of his coma. And one day, Walter Jr. gets home early from school, and he comes home to an empty house, being that Skylar spends most of her time these days at the car wash, the only place where she's not hated. Because Marie's been begging her for months to testify on Hank's behalf to clear his name and condemn Walter in the process, and Walter Jr. has basically been telling her to do the opposite. So the only in-between that she can think of is just to do nothing at all, leaving Marie and Hank to fight the legal battle alone. But like I said, Walter Jr. comes home early to an empty house and he notices Walter's old teaching bag in the living room. And it's been there since before he went missing, but for some reason, he's compelled to go through the bag today. And inside, he finds some papers, pens, and even that eyeball from that purple teddy bear. But the last thing in the bag would be a blank disc, looking to be a DVD. And his curiosity gets the best of him as he goes to press play. And this is the first thing he sees. This is my confession. Hey everybody and thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you enjoyed another story from the Heisenverse. And as promised in the beginning, Hank is alive and well, but according to this ending, it's almost like he's getting the Howard Hamlin D-Day treatment if you think about it. And as far as Walter goes, his fatal flaw was thinking that he can bargain with people who couldn't be bargained with. Because, after all, they're Nazis. But that's just me. But now I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of this story? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think there was something missing? Do you wish I don't kill Jesse so much? Whatever it is, let me know down below in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. Until then... My name is Merge, later.